Cancer Rising, welcome here to Soul Passages Astrology. My name is Georgia Dempsey and I am your astrologer and I'm so thrilled that you stopped by here for your March 8th Eclipse Report. These are really potent times when we have eclipses come into our lives. Uh, they tend to bring events in their wake that rock our world for six months to a solid year afterwards. And though we have one coming on the evening of March 8th into March 9th, I don't want you to get too hooked on that exact uh, couple of days because these are such powerful events that you may have something occur two weeks prior to the eclipse day or even up to two weeks after the eclipse day. And for you, Cancer Rising, it's all about going on some sort of journey that is going to expand your mind. So it's pretty exciting stuff, right? And wow, the planetary lineup in that house is huge. We've got Mercury, the planet of communications. We've got Neptune, which is a higher octave of Venus. We've got Ceres, a dwarf planet that's all to do with nurturing thyself. We have the sun and the moon there, which is why it's a powerful new moon phase or a great time to plant seeds for what you want on your life path destiny. We also have Chiron, the wounded healer there, and the south node of the moon, retrograde, and all of these are in Pisces. So there's a huge planetary lineup. Now let's talk a little bit about what that ninth house means. Ninth house is sometimes called the road to God. It's also called uh, the house of long journeys. So some of you are going to be going on literally a long journey, possibly overseas. And you may be doing this because you have an interest in other philosophies, other religions. You want to interact with people from different cultures. You want to learn from how they live. You want to see things from a different point of view. This would be a wonderful use of this energy. Uh, some of you are seeking higher education so you're looking for the right college you want the right teachers uh, you want the right curriculum um, so you're really trying to figure out what your life path destiny is and you're trying to figure out what classes you need to take so that you can be who you're meant to be in this world so that's another way this can pan out uh, certainly there's a very spiritual feel to the house of god and a lot of you could really just right now be working on mind, body, spirit practices, especially those that can enhance your mind and your higher consciousness level. So things like yoga, uh, meditation. When I see Mercury conjunct Neptune, I think of mantras and chanting and prayer and kirtans. This is a great use of this energy. And not only will it help you to feel more whole mind, body, and spirit, but it will just enable you to get in touch with that uh, higher mind part of yourself and to integrate who you really are. So there's a lot of ways that you can use these uh, energies to your benefit. Now, one thing when I think of the planet of communications and learning, because Mercury's all about the mind next to Neptune, I do want to say it's really important for you to focus right now and hone in on what it is exactly that you need to learn. Um, you want to kind of lay out the path. And I say that because opposing all this action, you have Jupiter in the North Node in the third house. And that is like an insatiable curiosity. And you want to learn, 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 and gather little bits of pieces of information here and there and here and there and here and there. But really with the ninth house, it's all about integrating that information and making the big picture out of it and making sure that all those classes lead you somewhere rather than just a willy-nilly, you know, grab a little bit here, grab a little bit there. You want to make sure that you get clear 
about what it is that you want to learn. And that's a message for Mercury and Neptune. Get clear, get real. Uh, take off the road cut colored glasses and figure out what it is you need to do uh, to get on to your right path. It's also a good time for you to be very discerning when it comes to spiritual teachers. You want to get the right person. Um, you know, use your Jupiter and Virgo to ascertain, is this person walk the walk? Do they talk the talk? Do they have the right information? Do they have the right background? Um, you don't want to be deceived. You know, Neptune conjunct Mercury can be deception, can bring in lies, can bring in information leaks. Um, even scandals, right? And uh, this is also the house of broadcasting and journalism, by the way, just so you know. So important to be careful about what information does go out. So that's part of what's happening. Also with Ceres up there, uh, whatever it is that you are trying to birth or heal, it's to take care of yourself, to nurture yourself, especially in regards to your emotional well-being. And I say that because squaring this third to ninth house axis, we have Saturn in Sagittarius at 16 degrees. And when you find Saturn in the house of work and health, it brings up a couple thoughts to me. Um, one is, you know, you may be facing a health issue at this time. Sometimes that's how it pans out. And so you may be really working on some of those mind, body, spirit practices and laying out a daily routine that you're getting serious about to help uh, get yourself better, you know. And you're probably digging deep into whatever that is. And there may be a spiritual component to it since it's up there in the ninth house. And so, you know, whatever that is, I mean, for some of you, it'll be taking a walk in the woods because Sagittarius loves that. For others of you, it's going to be doing uh, Tai Chi or Qigong or yoga or meditation or trance dance or, you know, any number of things like that. Um, but all of these things are being called for. And if you are facing a health crisis, uh, certainly getting in touch with yourself as spirit would be one thing that you could do that could help bring some peace and ease into the situation. Now, of course, the sixth house also represents work. And so you might be taking a hard look at, do I have the skill set I would like to get where I would like to be? And if not, Saturn is telling you to dig deep and find that. And you do have blessings in this regard. You've got that Jupiter North node down there in the third house, which is, you know, all the bits and pieces of information you've been gathering, the classes you've been taking. And up in the ninth house, the desire to integrate all of that. Now, right now, you may be having trouble doing that because this is a huge T-square, right? It's really uh, making the challenge for you to take what you've learned and put it into a nice, neat, uh, concise whole package. That's what you really need to work on right now. It's good for you to look at what skill sets you might be missing, but don't just keep gathering random bits of information. Work it into a nice, concise, whole picture. Because part of this for you is figuring out your life path destiny. I mean, truly, uh, this could be a good bit of what is happening for you right now. And I say that because up in that ninth house again, we have the sun, your vital yang, male, outward energy and vitality. And at times during the eclipse, it's going to be touched off by Chiron. That's the wounded healer. And so that's a call for you to get in touch with who you really are and to be able to express that. So not only recognizing yourself as soul, but what did that soul come down here to planet Earth this lifetime around to accomplish? And have you done it yet? Maybe some of the Saturn you're feeling in the sixth house is you're doing something for work that has nothing to do with you and Saturn is telling you to get real and find the truth of who you should be um, so that you can put that forward in your daily work. So uh, that's part of the message here. And um, your Dharma really is to discover yourself right now and to start walking that life path destiny. 
Now the moon is also involved. The moon has a lot to do with our habit patterns, our emotional reactions, our gut reactions. It has to do with the past. It has to do with desires. It has to do with the subconscious mind. And so there again, I come up with things of, you know, stuff that you can do to quiet the mind, to let that critical thinking mind go, where you can dig into the deeper layers of who you are and get at the truth of things, or change habit patterns that you're not happy with, or change emotional reactions that you're not pleased with. Things like hypnosis, for example, might be a great way to use this. Um, so that's what I think of when I think of things like uh, Chiron and the moon is just getting in touch with that emotional body uh, and what do you want what does the soul want what do you desire to be and go after that you know so often we live lives where we're half living because we're doing what everybody else wants us to do or what the society thinks we should do and a lot of us came down here with a real purpose and when we don't do that purpose, uh, we start to feel sick inside, right? And so that could be some of the Saturn in uh, the sixth house is, you know, you're not being true to yourself. And sometimes when we're not true to ourselves, that comes out in uh, ways that we don't always necessarily like, for example. All right, so let's see what else we have here. Oh, well... I would say look down to Jupiter in that north node in the third house uh, for support. There are blessings to be found in that. Connecting with others, talking with others, really thinking about how your mind is currently structured and wired. And do you like the way it is structured and wired? Or do you have old scripts that you could get rid of? And again, getting rid of those old scripts could help you with Saturn in the sixth. Um, it could also help you up there in the ninth <laughs> in terms of finding yourself as a more whole being, um, getting rid of the things that don't serve you anymore and moving forward onto a path that suits you a lot better as a soul in this incarnation. So a lot of you are really kind of going on a spiritual journey and you're going on a journey of the mind and you're working very hard at expanding your mind, whether it is to overcome health issues or to find a way to be of service to the world, that's another possibility, or simply to get onto a work path that makes you feel good about who you are. Well, my dear Cancer Rising, that is what I see for you on March 8th Eclipse. Um, expand that mind, enjoy the journey, and if you do need help along the way, I am still running my special till March 1st, a one-hour reading for $50. Contact information is at the beginning of the video. And please do tell me if this video helps you in your life, if the forecast made sense for you, if it rings true. What's going on? What's shaking out? I know, I've been through the eclipses myself, and they can absolutely rock your world. And so uh, share if you would like. I would absolutely love to hear from you. I wish you well, peace, blessings, and namaste.